Maybe you are aware, you know, many people don't understand fully grace. We know some people say, grace is good forever. That's the finish of the story. Some say grace means, well, you ne a person must be baptized, and then they get grace. There's diff different things people say. You notice that, perhaps. It's a very interesting study. I'm curious, do you believe that once you get grace, you'll be saved forever? I'm happy to see that. Okay. Now, a question. Even if we get grace, what happens? How do we get it? Uh, let's say this, 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 diff diff different things. Let's go back with my lesson. <laughs> okay. It says, what is grace? The most common understanding of grace is the unmerited favor in the love of God toward man. We are not equal with God in no way. But he has great love for people. The love that he has to allow us to come into heaven with him, with God. See, it's very strict law required. How many could go into heaven if that was so? Not many of us. Whatever in the heaven because it's a holy place. God is holy and there's no sin. No place for a little sin in that. We cannot get in. We know that truth is true since the people sin. They do good, good, but they still they love pleasure. They they do all they want. But God has great favor, great love for us. We're not equal to him. We make mistakes. He's given this grace to us that we might be with him in heaven. Unmerited means you and I are not worthy of it, of entering heaven because of our sin. He favors us with grace. Now, grace the Bible teaches that grace of God is a time that God has shed forth all his mercy and extended it to us a period of time by which we have opportunity to redeem ourselves from our sins. Now, From the time we're born, knowing good and right, no right and good, we still make mistakes. Now, how can we please our Father? I'll give you an opportunity, a chance, he does, to follow God's will. But how? How? People think, Grace is good forever. No, no, it's, it's limited. It's not limited, but it's a limited offer. It's a time 
all your life, but it ends at death. After that, the judgment day. How do we face God in the judgment? We've had all these mistakes. He's wanting us to improve. He's given us opportunity to learn from our mistakes and improve and do better. Grace is of God is conditional. Maybe you have read and heard some other people, different churches teach that grace of God is unconditional. Maybe you notice some, they teach no matter how awful you are, whatever you've done, grace is there. You make mistakes, you go on, it doesn't, you can't be equal to God. God is already too great. We're in his hands. Really, what the apostles teach, the truth that it is conditional. Let me give you some something to help. The apostle Paul explains several things about grace. Law, what it requires, its place in different places, what God meant uh, grace to be. Now, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. But because of God's grace, that is what I am. And his grace that he gave me was not wasted. That's Paul is saying. He's given to me. Is, for, is it forever? No, he's, it's not wasted. I could lose it. It's not wasted. It said, oh. I work harder than all the other apostles. That's not the reason. That's not, it's not that work. It's an awful punishment. There's two different you know, missionaries that were traveling in different places. He, miss, on, he went on a missionary trip to different places. He did a lot of work, more than the other apostles. And he says, but I was not really the one That was working. No. It was God's grace that was with me. Let me give you this idea now. Grace comes. There it is in a box. Okay. Grace of God. Fine. What do I need to do? Several things I must do. That shows you are following that teaching, that teaching of God. That's called when you become justified or justification. When you receive that time of the judgment, God will have salvation ready. Let's, let's look at that grace. evidence or the proof of grace. Let's look at Romans 5.2. By whom also we have access by faith into his grace. Wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We hope we're using that. We're holding on to that grace. Second Corinthians one fifteen, he says, and in this confidence, 
I was minded to come unto you, rejoicing that I might have a, hmm, a second chance. I analyzed this. Oh, it's interesting. He explained through the his prophecy, I fail. I fail to do good work. I come back. I try again. I, yeah, I learn from my mistake. Then I get up and go again. I go to this place. I'm reading about the Apostle Paul himself. He's, he's talking. Paul is saying, in Achaia, in Corinth, where Paul worked for that time, but he stopped in Macedonia and visited churches there. A lot of, a lot of work. He had to leave, but I had to. I had to go to Achaia. Then. I want to go back there and stop by and see that church group again, get more inspired. And then he goes someplace else and went to Judea. And he liked, but there, he wants to go there, but then he tried to do, as he went one time and another time. And Every, every opportunity was good. Okay. John chapter 15, he explains, greatest love has no one other than this, that he would lay down one's life for a friend. See, my friend, if, if, it's conditional, not unconditional. If you do whatever I've commanded you, see, see these several things? Paul says, if, if. If it always has a condition, maybe small, but big, big, powerful meaning behind that word, if. You must understand, if these things must be met, I order you to do these. Or this, it's an important word to remember. God talks about Grace and law together. Let's notice not one, one with the other. You break the law, you're wrong. That's the truth. But no one follows the law can be saved. You just can't. The law itself let me read this in Genesis 2, 16, 17, King James Version. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, you know it's Adam, okay, saying, of every tree in the garden, you may eat freely. says all these trees you can eat from but see that the tr that tree is a picture the tree of knowledge what you learn from God and Adam 
in this short time. God created him in a short time. You know that story. Okay. And God warned him. The first law, the first commandment, the first rule that God said, you know, he told him, do this. He said, do this, do it. But then he had this law. That tree of knowledge. It's a knowledge of good and evil. But before that, man didn't know any sin. That was the test, not to touch that one tree. You shall not eat of that. For in the day thou eatest thereof, therefore you shall surely die. You rebel, you die. God meant what I think you mean I'm finished, that's it. But it's not, it's a, t a taste of that would fall into later. Okay. Let's see, we know what happened. They both ate. But temp uh, Satan tempted both. They both sinned. That's what you know what the Bible teaches. First mistake. Devil told, surely you will not die. You will not die. It makes sense. I won't die. Warn, the devil is pretty skilled. Deceiver, flatterer. And will allure us into wrong. All of us are flattered. We all say, oh, I didn't think about it, but every day I can find a day that I don't sin. I cannot find. I'm a sick person. I don't think about sin, but we, every living person, uh, oops, in your mind, your emotion, TV, you see something, something bad. You're drawn to it. I should, I should turn it off, maybe. I should. It just may small and gossip, get angry, challenge others. We become a habit. We sometimes don't even think we sin. We make sin bigger and bigger and bigger <coughs> into murder and thievery and other terrible things, awfully bad, but when we begin to change and back up, as brothers and sisters, I tell you, we need to learn that God is teaching us and to follow that. Very many things. prophet Isaiah in uh, Isaiah 51 4 and 5 Isaiah says my people listen to me pay attention my decisions will be like lights where people can see I will soon save you and show that I am fair. I'm not unfair. I'm always fair. I will use my power and judge all nations the same, fairly. In all the faraway places, People are waiting for me. They want my power to help them. I know that uh, grace and truth work right together. If we know the truth, 
We work hard, follow the grace. And the only way you teach what the truth is, you will like to hear it. You like to hear the truth. It's good for the blind. How, how do you know? Honesty, you read, you study. People observe, oh, he's very smart, look at that. You just keep, boy, he's intelligent. And you begin to trust, oh, be careful. We must know the Bible's gospel. We know what the Bible says. Read it and teach and follow it. Then you know the truth through God's teaching. In the past, you used to sit and watch a lecture. Oh, it's very good. The people, yes, yes, yes. Very skilled speaker. When I was young, now I read the Bible. Oh, oh, I find it was not truth. Maybe I would say, I can't read all those words. They've already been to college. They already, they helped me a lot. But I'm wrong. I get in trouble sometimes. So, he explained for the law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No other, no other name under heaven. Can't be the right person, nobody. Not even the angels. They have different, different gospels. It's only through grace and truth. We see different religions, you know, Muslims and uh, different philosophies, different religions spread all over. But can we have world peace that way? Full of troubles and wars. Most of the religions of God are called a holy war. <laughs> Very frustration. My goodness, they can't find the truth that way. God never meant that people start wars. God wanted people to love each other and love the enemies even and teach them that wow, we're going to kill each other. I know the plans of the terrorist they want to destroy everything we know that happened before that's not what God wants God wants us to love each other to work together so that God so that people know the truth about God that's what he wants I want to explain about the righteousness of God, how he reveals it. Let's see what it says. Romans 3, 19 through 20. And now we know that what things soever the law saith, It saith to them, who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and that all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh, there shall no flesh be judged in his sight. It's just a perfect for for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That do this, do this, do this. God knows that I will make mistakes. I learn from my mistakes. So do that. We know, then we live according to the truth. 
We confess and we know the right. I, I know how to improve it. Do it always right. <clears throat> like worship or we all must, must, must blend in and the grace and the obedient, you become justified. I'm on 90% this and no, no, no. God wants us all to be righteous. Be right. Eliminate the bad, I guess. You want to know what the law tells you? Then you must try to do these things. See the grace of God. Romans 10, 5 says, Moses described or describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things Shall live by them. You l look at it, and then you know how to help, you know how to live right. You know what he meant. Also, in Leviticus 18, this Old Testament, before Jesus came, you must obey my rules and my laws, because whoever obeys them will live. And I am the Lord. I need to progress a little faster. Long time ago, you had the Old Testament, and we know that you had Abraham, then you had uh, a period limited to what God explained through his prophecies, and then we have some laws that God gave through his prophets to the people. So let's look at Isaiah. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Genesis 26.5. I will do this because your father, Abraham, obeyed my words and did what I said. He obeyed my commandments, my laws, and my rules. He followed what God said. He did not make mistakes. And God was pleased with Abraham. We know the story of what Abraham did, one thing came to my mind. What if I was in Abraham's shoes and somebody said, God commanded me to kill my son. Would I do it? Oh, I would say, no, 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 not my son. Why? Oh, that's wrong. It can't be right. I love my son. He's dearer to me. That's mean for you to tell me to kill my son. <coughs> I might want to argue, be hesitant. I read it, the Bible. God said, do that. Go and kill your son. I would, I would want to hug my son instead, do, instead of doing that. The temptation would be, boy, you have to be full of faith. Who God is. You know what he says. You learn from If I don't obey him, God will punish me. What's better? What's the best? What's right? What will work perfectly? I know it will. God said so. He will do it. He's so good. He, he knows what's best and all that. Abraham took and then the arm stopped him. No, he was stopped. He obeyed without hesitation, meaning he did not put it off. He went ahead and obeyed. That kind of faith. 
makes me think I know better. Would, would I neglect that? Would I? The world today is full of foolish things. Technology is just spreading everything. We have phones, we have computers, we have all, we pay to all these things that take so much of our time. What time is left for God? <laughs> well, really, God, we must be faithful. But we pay attention to all of that. I'm bored. I don't know what to do with my time. <laughs> I pray for, for help, and it gets dark. Oh, I don't want to turn off the lights. They finally go dim. I go to bed, go to sleep. I wake up and start it over again. Don't have uh, time <coughs> for all the things that are so beautiful. I don't have time for the beautiful things of God in our life. <coughs> we have a beautiful, beautiful God. I know this. The people are changing things all the time. The last year, so many changes have happened. Some have women preaching. Some are letting homosexuals in and supporting at the same uh, same-sex marriage now. So many conflicts in the world today. So different from what Romans te teaches us. We know it's wrong. But people ignore the stories. We just listen to it. Oh, they're, they have a good mind. The old law is there now. We have several thousand years since then, since Moses' time, really. The gospel never dies. It's still good news to the end of the world. It's so clear, but still, things get worse, worse, worse. I get chill bumps thinking about it. But what will happen the next year? What will happen for our children? What will happen to our grandchildren? And then and then and on and on. What do we do? Roll up our sleeves and go to work. Showing the people that we know what the Bible says. I have a whole lot more, but I know God has given us the time to do right and to have good judgments and the plan to go to heaven. People don't follow it. They criticize all that and put it away. People, oh, many, a high percentage of them are strong. We're all like, remember, Jesus said, many that go the broad way, Jesus said. Few that follow the narrow way. Few. Do you want to be that few in number? People like to join the big crowd. They want the big place. You notice that. <coughs> I prefer the smaller way of truth. That's salvation. Jeremiah 31, 33. I notice you like Jeremiah. So many people. Bob's going to talk about Jeremiah a little bit later. I uh, really like uh, Jeremiah. But anyway, he says here, In the future, I will make this agreement with the people of of Israel, that's Jeremiah's time. This message is from the Lord. I will put my teachings in their minds, and I will write them write them on their hearts. I will be their 
God. And they will be my people. Remember a long time ago? We did not have all these computers and other te technical skills. We had to put it in our hearts, right? <laughs> we put everything in our minds. Th now we have the processors and everything else. We have, even before they had the scrolls, <laughs> the people did not. I, I missed that. They did not put into it. Okay. But people just listened. They did not add to the scrolls. We, with this technology, this age, we want to put, put things in. We want to study it. Over, we can look at it. We need to take it into our mind, in our hearts, and so we can live forever. Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I think he said, Paul went to this church. He told them, you put down your letters in your mind and on your heart. Oh, put it in your heart. Take it into your heart. We have all this technology. We have paper. We have so many things that, that keep records of. I mean, we are a lot better than they are a long time ago. Matthew, he says, 5, 20, I think, he says that we should do much better, more righteous than what the Hebrew people did, the Jewish people did. We must be better than that. They did a lot. Walked by their feet. <laughs> Walking all the different cities, touching other places, the walk. 70 miles to a different to do a different work for God. The Jordan River. <coughs> walk there. <coughs> let's let's look, look at at the land. Now it's all populated over there. People are airplanes flying in, but I can still be in touch with the people, but it seems like I can't find the time to do that. We can go so many places. Like your brother said, well, what's our excuses? What's our excuses? We don't have any excuses. God hates excuses. God knows people what they're thinking. <laughs> Long time ago, on Wednesday night, used to come every, every week. I wish they come every week and teach this every Wednesday night. But <laughs> would you agree with that? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay. I, I remember this from a long time ago. Isaiah 42, 21, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake, for he will magnify the law and make it honorable. That's what we want to do. Romans 4, 13 to 15, Abraham and his descendants received the promise that would get the whole world. But Abraham did not receive that promise because he followed the law. No. He received that promise because he was right with God through his faith. <coughs> you know what faith means. It's like you know 
like you never have seen God. You never have seen Jesus in person. God created the earth. I didn't see that happen. But you read the scriptures, and in your understanding, your knowledge, your mind, you know God was there. You know he did that. That's faith. Trusting. Knowing him. Abraham knew God was there. Very powerful. He knew what he could do. He obeyed him. But he's faithful. Even though he was wrong sometimes. All of his mistakes were blotted out. Because he was trying to do right. He made progress. Apostle Paul announced, I'm the worst sinner, Apostle Paul says. But still, he went and preached and preached. He, he was afraid of what, uh, at that time, Saul he was going to Damascus. He was going there, ready to uh, grab Christians. But he became blinded on the way. You know that story. And then... God helped him to know the truth. His faith shot up. From that moment on, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He prayed, he prayed. And then he was immersed in water. And he relaxed from that, all that. Nope. He knew, he knew God wanted him to work, and he continued on. Wow, we never saw God. We never had that, but we can read and we can know who God is by reading, rolling up our sleeves, and then doing the best we can to build a good faith. Sorry, I have to cut some of this because of time for other classes. Every class is beneficial and full, so it's very important. I will skip over several to several slides. I'd like to show you this one. I noticed this one about David. In Romans 4, I'm going to put a little bit more seconds here. David, Romans 4, verse 6 to 8, uh, David said the same thing when he was talking about the blessing uh, people have when God accepts them as good without looking at what they have done. God is looking what at what's good, what's better than looking at what uh, bad things people do. Thinking positive. I always think about the wrong. I'm depressed about I couldn't do this. I can't do that. No. Asking for forgiveness from the heart. Knowing what he said and forgiving and then to put that behind me and go forward. Time of Judgment Day. Hey, I remember when he did all these things. But he's, God lets him go. He's already asked for forgiveness. God knew that. He did the wrong, but they're forgiven. Oh, I got to read another. <laughs> Again, one more. You're laughing? Yes. Okay, keep teaching. But remember, I know that other class is waiting. But many, many fools are returning to their follies. They go right back. Like our brother talked about, the pigs washed them all clean and made them all nice and pretty, and they go right back into the mud again, don't they? Well, here, 
the picture of a dog. Oops. Oops. I hate to say this after after lunch, and you know what's happening here. Oh, but oh, I should have had this before lunch. <laughs> oh, 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 we we all ate a whole lot. I'm teasing you, but uh, notice he's teaching. Oh, you throw up, and then later there's they go right back to what they. When I was a kid, I looked at that. Oh my! Oh, that's so awful. Belly and everything. Oh, how could they do that? They, they eat it again? Hey, Dad, look, look, look what's happening. Yeah, dogs do that. Oh, oh, I'm sick. Oh, do you remember? Oh, oh. A few days. Uh, what? No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Would you eat that? No, no way. I just kept thinking about that. I saw, I read, read this. I was surprised. I understood how God feels. We do a sin again, and God gets so disgusted with it. He doesn't want to look at it. Get away out of my sight. Oh, forgive me. Forget it. Come back, and he loves us, and he puts it to the side, and he goes on. Other thing, stolen from Billy Level. <laughs> I, I should have brought that before, but there it is. Oh, that pig. I've talked about it before. Boy, they just like that mud. <laughs> You and I, we get out, they smell bad. Oh. Okay, that's enough. This is the last slide, I promise. <laughs> okay, notice grace. What does that mean? It's the beginning. God gives a gift freely. That's grace. Grace is like a blessing. But a little bit, wait. It means what God requires us to do according to what he says. Let's look. The law, what God gives, these things. You can't make any mistakes if you have a law. If you make a mistake, you're a sinner. You know what God says. You already know it. You understand. Instead of, yeah, I know. Oh, I, oh, I forgot. I don't know anything. I, oh, Nope. Put it down. You know. You have already understood. You know what the law is. It's very important for us to know what's wrong and know what's right and to follow and make good decisions. That's what the law does. Faith develops by knowing and understanding and building up trust. That's called faith. <coughs> the gospel is the good news. It's so important for us to know what the law tells us and follow what God commands, that's so important. Baptism is so important because of, we become children of God. We have uh, life for him. We die. We're buried. We're resurrected. We like Christ. We do good works. We do what's right, like Abraham did good works. Righteousness. Continuing to improve. We make mistakes, we get better and better and better. The truth. Knowing the truth and progressing in it. Very important for us to obey 
obey. Be obeying what God commands. Abraham, very obedient person. Called, God called him righteous. Justification. Did these things right? These right? Improving? Stand up for God. Do the best you can. Do better and better on a judgment day. It's a symbol that blows up. Okay, there it is. But anyway, I hope you will do better. God's grace is fine, but we find, look at this, look at this. Look at the progress of your life. Look, you eliminated this, the last day. Then comes the judgment. Are all justified? Apostle Paul says, the person that is justified is, is righteous. He's done right. Now I look. God, thank you. Thank you for your grace that you've given us. But still, to help us with all these things, you give us the advice. A free gift means it's full. It's very important. It, boy, but I, you give me, but can I lose it? Can I waste it? Let us say I love you to God. I love you. I love you. Love you. Goodbye. Let's all hurry to our next class right away.